and welcome to the Rangers News YouTube channel. My name is Cameron Willis and I'm joined by James Black and Jordan Carlyle. Um, they say that a week is a long time in football and it'll be eight days on by the time Rangers play at Aberdeen. And it's been very long uh, this week, it seems like an age since Rangers beat Celtic. Uh, as a kind of cold snap has blown into Scotland, Celtic jetted off to Middle East and to warm weather camp. It's dominated headlines this week, but Rangers have been quiet and been going about their business quietly as they have done all season, preparing for what promises to be another high temperature affair um, in, the, in Scotland's North East against Aberdeen. So, yep, uh, a crunch match and a big chance to go 22 points clear with Celtic not playing until Monday. What, what are your thoughts on the game, James? Yeah, it's, it's a massive one. Um, it's one of these ones where I think you just want to keep momentum going. You want to get that 15th consecutive run under the belt and just keep putting pressure on Celtic with them not playing until the Monday. And the prospect of a 22 point gap over the weekend is massive. And it just it keeps ramping up the pressure on them. And kind of you're waiting for them to slip up again. John? Uh, yeah, I, d I agree with that. It does seem that every single time, really, that Rangers have taken a positive step this season, that then the next week they have the chance to play before Celtic and put the pressure on. They've taken that uh, basically every time so far this season. Of course, it's, it's Celtic's fault, really, for for moving the fixture back a day and uh, and going in the camp. And as you say, that has really dominated the, the headlines this week. Um, so, yeah, Rangers have been pretty quiet about it, but this is a really big game and um, I, I think for for how brilliant last week was or for Rangers' perspective or how, how important the weekend was, they don't really want to lose momentum here quickly afterwards, giving them, you know, bearing in mind that uh, there's a game at Motherwell and then they have to go to Easter Road as well this month. Um, a couple of tricky away games and, and obviously the first game of the season was, was tricky at Pataudry and Jared struggled there uh, at times in the past, so uh, a really big game and yes, an opportunity to go further forward, but something to just keep the momentum at this point is really key because you looked at, at these two games, Old Firm, Aberdeen away, uh, as a potential banana skin and, and sort of a, a pair of fixtures where the last two years Rangers would have uh, slipped up according to form in January, so uh, yeah, really big. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's always a hard game going up to Patoji and they obviously love to play us. It's their old firm or their rivalry, you know, so so we expect it to be difficult. Uh, it's obviously going to be cold, probably frosty. It's going to be a really tough game and obviously our players notoriously understand it's, an, it's a big fight and it's another big ask for them. So they're well aware of what they're going to have to do and they're well aware they're going to be in a fight. Um, but you, you kind of have to be confident because Rangers have got the quality and they've added that extra edge to the game this season. So looking back at the two matches, um, James will talk about the first one at Pataudry first. Um, you'll have to cast your head back to the first game of the season. Um, in that match, Aberdeen obviously without Sam Cosgrove, I think Curtis Main was injured as well and they were really devoid of striking options. Um, do you think they're going to pose a completely different prospect this time around? I just, you know, I don't really. Um, I think kind of watching Aberdeen quite a few times this season. I, I don't think that they're anything much more than what we've seen from this season. I think that a lot of their attacking threat can be a bit overhyped at times. I, I, when you look at the last game against them, I, I don't think. I mean, one the last one at Ibrox, so we're kind of miles off. We only really one player that you know, really contributed anything to the game, and I, I can't expect much the same again on Sunday. What about you, Jordan? Do you expect something different from that first game of the season? Uh, I know. I I think that was a was a difficult game but for Rangers. I think Leon Balogun came in and did really well on debut. Had defending to do in the game. Uh, I think it was him who made a a really really good goal line clearance at one point, and you know it could have been a lot different. This whole season could have been a lot different if that went in, and and doubts would have crept in early early on for Rangers, but. Um, it took a a good goal, a good finish from from Ryan Kenton that day. But you don't really you, you don't really know what Aberdeen are going to turn up, at, which has been the case for a while. Uh, obviously at Ibrox it was 
comfortable. A couple of early goals, then one straight after the break as well. Uh, so they were never really in the game. But if you look at Aberdeen man for man, player wise, they do have some quality in there, some powerful players, um, particularly, and some experience in there. Um, and I, I saw them, I, I did a game, at, they were at St. Mirren earlier in the season. And it just looked like they had a lot more quality in St. Mirren all over the pitch, but they were really, really poor. And that was even with McCrory in the uh, in the middle of in the middle of the park and Johnny Hayes and Ferguson guys, you know, with big reputations uh, like that. And Cosgrove hasn't really had the sort of season that he had last season, obviously uh, injuries and stuff. So yeah, I don't think you really know what Aberdeen are going to turn up. I think, you know. A lot of Rangers fans have pointed out in the past that they tend to not perform against Celtic but perform against Rangers and they have had good results down or in recent years. But this this Rangers team are sort of a different entity than the ones that have uh, struggled against them in the past, particularly in Glasgow, that is. And uh, yeah, I, th- I think they'll be physical, um, but you don't really know what you're going to get quality wise. It, it, it could be tight and it, and it could be one where Rangers go up and, and can assert themselves from sort of an early early stage. I think uh, I think for Aberdeen, they do kind of raise their game. So, so if it was at Ibrox, as we've seen recently with Aberdeen at Ibrox, I think Rangers are in a much better position to kind of exert that dominance and, and put that form that they've uh, grown into in Stephen Gerrard's third, se- third season. But, I think away. I think still think that's a tricky fixture. I still think that, regardless of how Aberdeen have looked in different matches this season, I think that they'll they'll, they'll put up a stout defence against Rangers. So it's a it's a game that kind of worries me. Yeah, I mean I say that Rangers have got a nineteen point gap, but it does kind of worry me. I don't want to lose that momentum, and I think it would be huge psychologically if just after beating Celtic, we managed to get through what is effectively the second hardest game of the season um, against Aberdeen away from home. Um, yeah, he touched on that Ibrox one where Rangers absolutely demolished them, which was 4-0. Um, I, I seen Ash Taylor in the build that was talking about how there was a couple of deflections and stuff. But, I mean, it's going to deflect in if they're going to defend uh, at the edge of your box. But can Rangers go to Pataudry and put in that same kind of performance, um, or is it going to be a little bit different um, from that match at Ibrox? Hey, John. I, I would say that it, it's going to be difficult to have that because Rangers do just have a, a sort of a really, really good presence at home at the minute. And that, obviously, he's right. There were a few deflections in there. They weren't all, you know, uh, Puskas award contenders, the goals. But, I mean... It was a very comfortable game, and um, you know the fact that they went in allowed Rangers to be comfortable in and around that. But um, I, I think it's a stretch to say that you know it would have been a really tight game if if luck hadn't went Rangers' way. I, th- I think it will be always difficult in any uh, in terms of when you're facing any opposition to to dominate them the same way away from home as they do at home, and, and Rangers do play a different way often when they're on the road um, but uh, Rangers certainly have the quality to sort of put their stamp in the game I think not having roof uh, is obviously a blow And but when you when you look at it going into the game if Rangers don't have roof Jack and Arfield that's, that's three very big players and, and three players who would be crucial to away games in terms of Arfield's energy in the middle of the park Jack's sort of quality sitting in in an anchor role and roof with that sort of Lovely, like finesse and, and touching around the box. So, guys that you're going to miss in away games. Um, but the difference this year is that Rangers do have players who can come in and who are sort of ready, uh, waiting in the wings. You maybe haven't had enough chances. You guys like Giannis Hadji, uh, James's uh, favorite player, and Cedric Gitten, who has had very few chances in terms of from the start. I think he's only started twice in the league all season. He did a really good job against Kilmarnock away, against a physical opposition playing on the right-hand side. So that's another option if Jared wants to do things that way. So Rangers still have definitely the personnel to do it, but um, the fact that they're missing three key players will probably have an impact on the performance. And I, I, I wouldn't expect, I don't know if it's a contradiction because I'm saying I don't know what Aberdeen will turn up, but I wouldn't expect it to be uh, a cruise to victory like it was at Ibrox. 
What about you, James? Are you expecting a similar match to the one at Ibrox, or do you think that it's going to be somewhat different? In- it'll, it'll be more pragmatic from Rangers, but there's absolutely no reason why they can't get and just put Saberdeen. Um, I think you, you, can have, you look at some of what Gerard said since the Celtic game, I think one of his comments was that it's, it's all about results now, and that's very much going to be it. I think you're going to see Rangers being a little bit more conservative and kind of taking some fewer risks knowing now that mistakes are really going to hurt them. Uh, so, yeah, I think they'll be a bit more pragmatic, but I would not be shocked in the slightest if you see a four or five. Yeah, I, 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 I hope it is, man. I'd love to scud them. I, I, I've got a particular distaste for Aberdeen. But um, the... I, I, I do I do I do tend to agree with you. I think that now it is about results. And I think that at that point when we played them, we were really flying high. I think I think we were at the kind of the apex of um the, the, the at least the playing form that we've had this season. And I think things have changed somewhat and Rangers have become a little bit more resolute. Which isn't always a bad thing, um, because we could maybe be a little bit too adventurous. As we actually seen it, Patoji, I think it was last season, when we went two 0 up, and he got complacent. I don't, I don't think there's much, there's as much a chance of that happening. But like I say, I, I think it's a game that we'll take very, very seriously. I think it's a big challenge, and hopefully we overcome it. Uh, you touched on the injuries there. I think James, you've got a, a predicted eleven plan for tomorrow. Um, what? What what are your what are your thoughts with regards to injuries and with regards to potential eleven? I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of changes for the old firm. Um, partly because you're lacking options. I think when you look at the midfield. You, you know, it's, it's going to be the same three almost certainly who started against Celtic. I, I don't see the likes of Bungani Zungu coming in to the start of eleven at Petodre. Uh The big one for me is who comes in to replace uh, Kamar Roof if Roof's no fit. And whether it's Balogun or Hellander at centre back, but you know I think we kind of touched on it before the, the old fun game that even though a lot of people kind of tend to prefer Hellander, Gerard's got his wee, his, his wee preference for for Balogun there, so I'd imagine that he'll play on Sunday. What about you, uh, Jordan? Is there any kind of uh, like quirks or anything kind of outside the box? You're thinking about the eleven? Or the tactics. I, th- I think the only slightly left field thing would be uh, maybe the influence that Eton could have in the game. Um, and again, and again, I think it showed sort of with Jared Joe with the selection for the old firm that he doesn't quite think Hadji's the man for either a, a really big game or potentially then a game against which is going to be more physical, um, which could then apply to the weekend. Although he absolutely raved about him after the game, so. If he, if he comes out and says, basically, we picked these players and then he came on the second half and delivered what we needed and then doesn't pick them for the next week, then that's obviously mixed signals to the players. So, Eton probably the only outside one. I, th- I think the fact that Balogun played in the old firm just shows that he's now uh, the favourite partner. So, unless it is a case of rotation. Jared spoke sort of quite openly about the need to to rotate Balogun at the start of the season, but he sort of threw that out the window a bit recently when, sort of through force, when uh, Edmondson was banned and, and Hollander was, was out with COVID. And because I think he played four or five games in the space of two weeks and he came through that well, which is a good sign for him going forward. So I, I can't see any major changes. I, I think it's a massive advantage that Rangers have had it's not an advantage over Aberdeen, but it's a very timely eight-day break um, or just basically a lack of a midweek fixture after a, a really busy schedule. So slowing things down that way uh, is good. And and that means, as James says, I think the midfield three will be exactly the same. It uh, gives Davis a chance to recharge the batteries and uh, and go again. I was there. I was going to be my next question, um, James. What, what do you think about the the kind of eight day break? The fact that Rangers have managed to get this uh, now it's been a kind of long time coming. Players will get some time with their families. I think Stephen Gerrard said after the match, and they'll get some much needed time on the kind of training pitch. Um, something that we've not really had for a while. How much of an impact do you think that's going to have? Not just on the Aberdeen match, but on the on the tough run that's coming up. It's a weird one for me because we, when you speak to a lot of guys who've played in England before coming up to Scotland, they tend to love the, cal- the fact that their calendar 
has that kind of bit more of a gap and it's not just game, 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 game. Um, so I think it's definitely going to be something that we can really get some proper benefit from. I think you look at the last like, three or four months, it's pretty much been Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Thursday, right from August. So there won't have been much time to kind of work on alternatives and kind of different ideas away from just your, kind of your everyday match day stuff. So I, it's, it's going to be good just for the, the coaching staff to get a wee, bit, a wee bit more time with the players and to try kind of some new stuff at them. This is like the kind of elephant in the room as well after the last two years, but this is effectively, the, well, although there is no extended winter break, the, the return to football after the new year old firm, which has traditionally under Stephen Gerrard seen Rangers capitulate. Jordan, is there something in the back of your head and do you have any fear that it's going to be repeated in the coming weeks? Uh, I mean, I don't. Uh, I would say that in the back of the head is a, a sort of maybe a fair assessment of it. I, I don't think from the position Rangers are in such a position of strength now that's so different um, as before. It's not oh, just got their nose in front or they're a couple of points behind and and they need to to go on a good run. Rangers can afford. Rangers can essentially afford at the minute to have a sort of similar slump to past seasons. Um, and if then if they then win their last ten games, they might still actually win the league. And I think that's gonna take a great weight off the off the players' shoulders. That's not the way they're gonna to want to do this because the whole thing this season has been high standards and, and driving that. And if I, I think the goal now must be so Barisic has come out and said, Look, there's no uh title talk and all in the change room, which is I think it's good to hear. People will be pleased with that because you have, you know, People in the past sucked into saying the wrong thing in the media, like Shay or Joe coming out and saying Rangers are the best team in Scotland, and you know all this sort of stuff. And then it, when you don't live up to what you say, then it makes it worse. Um, whereas at the minute, it's just a case of getting the head down. And I think the sort of unsaid thing will be: look, now we've got our nose in front by by such a margin, we're going to get this done as soon as possible in the fewest games possible, and just really put the foot down. And get over the line. So yeah, I do think it's so different this year with the advantage and the fact that there hasn't been the multiple week break and the jolly off to the camp abroad and going, you know, all the running sessions. And so you have the time away from the family, you get back on the pitch, you do the running, then you go through the football and work your way back in there. This is just a case of the guys have got three days off, whatever it was, maximum after the thing and they're straight back into it. So there's been no real need to switch off mentally and then turn back on. It's just a case of, of keeping going, but having slightly fresher legs than if they had a game in midweek. So there's no need for them to treat it any differently than they have the rest of the season. Uh, and I, I don't think it will be an issue. Um, having said that, though, it is possible to lose games without it being this sort of New Year slump. Um, and Aberdeen won't be thinking that, oh, this is going to be a Rangers team that are going to be awful because it's, you know, uh, it's just turned into a new year, but they'll also still fancy themselves to get a result at home. So it's about, as the players, classic player lines, oh, we're only thinking one game at a time and all that, when they're obviously not. But, I mean, the games here at Motherwell and, and Hibs are all potential banana skins. So, uh, yeah, it's just about 100% focus, but wouldn't say I'm worried that it will happen again. You share uh, Jordan's confidence that uh, Rangers have kind of banished the Blues of the last two years? Oh, yeah. it's no, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. It's not something that I've got any concerns about. Uh, what's happened in the second half of the last season has got as much relevance to this season as what happened the last half of Walter Smith's last season. You know, it's, it's apples and oranges. Um, the, one, the only one kind of carryover from it would be for me that we're in a position now, we're given Rangers position and strength in the league. If they don't win the title, there's a very, very, very big decision has to be made. I mean, I'm, like obviously after the old farm, there's loads of people saying that's it, it's caught us over, it's everything, you know, I think when in the cold light of day when the dust settles, it's 19 points, Celtic have got a big way back to make it 10, but 10 points can be turned around in a matter of games. And for me, the, the, Post New Year thing is obviously massively overblown, but I think what it showed is that when results started going bad, 
in Dubai eh, after Dubai. The the pre- the press jumped on it, the latched on it. Oh, this is the second time in a row, and it just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. I think that with this match this weekend, I mean, like I say, I think it'll be a tight game. I think if we get three points, it'll be huge. Um, but say something didn't happen, say we drew or even worse, we lost. Um, I think that the players would have to respond very quickly because that's the narrative. That is the direction that the press is going to go. That's what the response of like Celtic fans. It, 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 that is what the pressure is going to build around. So I think the next two or three games, just if we manage to get them over the line, I think it quashes that. And then I think it becomes a question of, is this Rangers team going to bottle it again after January? It becomes, can they hold their nerve um, in the in the title running? I, I, think, I think it changes. So I, I think it's important for that reason, but I, I'd agree with you. I think I don't think it's really that relevant other than in press circles um, to, to try and kind of maximise and, and twist the pressure. Um, so if uh, if Rangers win this game, maybe oh maybe it'll be that. Um, I'd, 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 I'd just say that like I, I would say it's slightly more relevant to when talking about past years, just because the personnel are there. So the players went through it and a lot of them are the same but that could also be used in a positive way in terms of we've been in this situation situation we thought this we went about it this way and it didn't work so now we're doing something different so it can be seen as a positive that way and I also think though that given the lead the Rangers have at the minute this is about as difficult spell of fixtures as you're going to get in any given year when you go Old Firm and Aberdeen away Motherwell being poor this season, but still a threat away and Hibs away. I think when you, if you go through those games, you've got Ross County in there as well. But if you go through those games and you draw one of them and it happens to be Aberdeen away and you win the rest, that's not a bad return at all to escape a month like that. So uh, it's a situation where I, you can sort of see it in advance at the weekend. If it doesn't go quite right, there'll be, um, yes, as you say, a lot of headlines about it and maybe some panic, but I don't think that's necessary because the, the, the six-pointer was the old firm. Cross that hurdle, don't lose. Um, in Aberdeen, at the least, at the very least, and, and then build from there. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think the players will definitely have it in their minds from the last couple of years, but knowing the sort of... I think the characters are sort of looking at the characters in that dressing room like have like goals and it'll be a case of right, we're going to prove that we're not actually bottlers it'll be a case of not fear but an awareness of it and a sort of a determination to put it <laughs>